Hi there, grade 12s, and welcome to our uh, term two review or our term two um, revision session where we're looking at the theory models that we've covered in this term. So let's jump in and get started. Now, what we've done so far in term two, we looked at what the internet is, and by now we should know that definition. Please, this is something that does come up. We've also looked at our wide area network. So remember, this is a network that spans many geographical areas. And uh, you'd have to probably give an example um, of that as well. We've got our internet connections, things like what our ISP is. So you must be able to tell me what an ISP is, give an example, and then, you know, what some of the services are that they actually render. And yeah, they mention them. So please, that that is important. Okay. Um, the criteria for certain internet connections. Now, this comes up usually in the scenario setup. So... They'll tell you that somebody is going to be setting up a, a home office or, you know, they're setting up a new computer lab or so, some, you know, story like that. And you would then have to work out, well, what is going to be best for the scenario? Do they need a wired connection? Do they need an, uh, a wireless connection? Do they, you know, need certain hardware? Um, here we're talking specifically in terms of, okay, well, they need an internet connection. Does it have to be kept? In other words, does it need a limit? Does it need to be mobile? Um, how much data do they need? You know, what's the difference between upload speed and, and download speed? What is meant by bandwidth? For that matter, what is meant by shaped and unshaped and throttling? Now, when I, just to give you a simple example, when I throttle someone and I grab you and I choke you, I'm choking the life out of you, right? So if I take a connection that's like a cable and I throttle that, it means I'm limiting the speed in general. When I shape it, it means I'm only going to allow, you know, I'll, I'll give priority to certain things during certain periods of time. So let's say your line is shaped between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. And that means that priority will be given to certain items, maybe downloads as opposed to uploads. If it's unshaped, it means you can do whatever you want. OK, the speed is not limited or messed with at all. Please know the difference between ADSL and fiber. Your, these are your wired connections. OK. Some of the advantages and disadvantages, again, I work on the rule of two, just knowing at least two of those. Okay, um, they go into some more detail on that. That's fine. You can read through those things. Um, then on the Wi-Fi side, what a hotspot is. Okay, please, what your hotspot is, um, what your router does at home, because remember your router has those antenna. Some of them don't even have the antenna, but they provide a wireless um, network environment in that area as well. So uh, here they mentioned internet access using smartphones and tablets. People prefer data communication that is always on, fast and reliable and hassle free. So again, I'm just I'm just breezing through some of the things um, that they do mention here. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, Given the newer technology, they're going to talk about 3G, 4G, they're going to talk about 5G. It's just the next generation, which means it's faster. Okay, That's the main thing behind it. So just know that. Then your Wi-Fi versus cellular. Okay, You'll have to work out, again, based on the scenario, what is going to be best for the individual. Then some of our internet services, things like real-time messaging. Guys, we know what this is. Not even going to go there. Not even going to go there. We already know what that is. Some of us too much. Voice over internet protocol. This is where we have in our voice being transmitted over the internet. So things like, you know, Skype, your WhatsApp calls, uh, WhatsApp video calls as well. Uh, you know, things like Zoom or, or anything where I'm transmitting voice and video over the internet. And you can work out again some of the advantages and disadvantages of that as well. Then we've got video conferencing. Now, this is a very interesting um, little topic here because there's a lot that goes with it. I mean, think of me setting up everything that I that I have here. What do I have to do? I've got my laptop on this side. I've got my camera over here. I've got an internet connection. If I want to stream this, I've got to look at, well, how many people are going to connect? What sort of lighting do I need? What sort of camera do I need? What sort of hardware do I need? I've got a mic here as well, so you know, so we can get good audio. Um, those are all the things these days that I've got to look at when it comes to video conferencing. So as much as it's, you know, 
uh, something that's easy to set up and things, you need to look at all the scenarios, or all the options, and they will ask you things like that. So know your advantages, know your disadvantages, but also now to put into practice what you've learned so far for a scenario like that. Then also your good practices when it comes to that. Obviously, you don't want everything in the dark. You don't want it like, whoop, no, <laughs> we don't want that. All right. Cloud computing, what that is, means we're working with the software online. So like your Gmail, all right, Amazon Web Services, your Google Drive, and what some of the you know typical advantages and disadvantages um, of cloud computing. Biggest one is that it works beautifully, but unless you have an internet connection, you can't use it. We dealt with online storage. Um, I think that was even with the grade 11s. So guys use, especially grade 12s, now use that revision from grade 10, grade 11, up to grade 12, and you'll see how the one builds on the other. File sharing, we know this by now already. Many of us use, you know, Google Drives and things like that. So it's very easy to share access to the information online, nice and fast, but, you know, not always suited for large files. And again, limited to those who have an internet connection. Okay, so, yeah. Um, but when we're using email specifically, please know, I don't, I think it has a limit of like five or six megs. And that's not a lot, but you'd have to compress and that's why we talk about compression software you know compress the files in order for it to actually go through so yeah with emails you also are restricted to the number of uh, recipients so these are just some of the things that you need to bear in mind we have spoken about ftp or file file transfer protocol um you know ftp servers before so that you should know your grid computing just know the definition and an example okay definition and example You'll be fine with grid computing. All right. Um, let's see. Government internet services. Again, yes, you can go through this. You would have done these modules by now already. Um, they might ask you about the digital divide right, between those who know what's actually happening with this and those who have no idea. And, and that gap is sort of unfortunately growing because a lot of people are still not on uh, these services and sometimes it's because of finances sometimes because the data is too expensive that they can't go that route um, the cost of living might be too expensive for people to move that route and so only a select group are actually doing it so there, there, are, there are many there are many different factors all right 2.2 dealt with the dangers of computer crime and i'm not going to go into all this we've I've done this before so please the term social engineering very important malware very important okay the techniques you need to know your techniques what is fishing what is the difference between fishing and farming okay the two can work together but you need to be able to identify the difference between the two fishing and farming right uh click jacking this is one that's been addressed these days so click jacking you're clicking on it um, and it appears to take you to one thing but it's actually taking you somewhere else Spoofing, the forgery of an email header. When you see those two sort of terms, you know spoofing, right? Spyware, this is software that works in the background, monitoring you, tracking you. Um, your keylogger records all your keystrokes. And then the general term computer virus, malware. Remember, it's malicious software. That's why it's called malware. Looking to disrupt the normal functioning of a computer. So... They might also on this ask you what are some of the signs that your computer might be infected with a virus and you know you'll say maybe it's slowing down uh, maybe files have been disappearing things are not working as they should that type of thing computer worms just understand what it does what does this piece of software actually do can it work over a network or can it move itself over a network when your know, network's connected to the internet or not just understand those things trojans as well gone through this ransomware they can give you a scenario on ransomware to ask you well what type of malicious software what type of malware occurs when someone is you know basically locked the information away and they are demanding money for it they'll usually also ask you what uh, type of currency would you use and most of the time it would be you know aimed at bitcoin Okay, as if Bitcoin is just used for criminal purposes. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so um, Adware, we've dealt with this in previous modules as well. Bots, please, 
know this. Okay, this is something that comes up often. Your computer is compromised and it's controlled remotely. It has now become a bot. And then we look at the different categories of computer crime, things like cyber stalking, spam. Um, all this falls into harassment, cyber bullying. Okay, go and check on um, Netflix. There are some beautiful documentary series, very nicely done, very entertaining, dealing with a lot of this. Okay, um, you get internet attacks as well, attacks on businesses online. This is why you have a new thing called cyber terrorism. Right? It's not just terrorists out there, but actually dealing with it um, in cyberspace as well. Then you have people stealing bandwidth, stealing Wi-Fi. Yeah, you know when you, like I keep saying, you're sitting at the, on the corner and you're taking someone else's Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Okay, identity theft. Stealing processing time. Like, you don't realize it, but using the computer for something that's not school related, you are stealing <laughs> computer processing time. You, you're using that processing time to do something else. Playing games in class. Okay, <laughs> you are stealing. Right? Data and intellectual property and money. So unfortunately, and copyrighted material, all of these things, just bear that in mind. How do we protect ourselves? The main thing is an antivirus piece of software, right? Main thing is antivirus software. They're going to mention a couple. Uh, you should be able to mention a couple of examples. But for most of the scenarios, you'll be able to say antivirus um, software. However, you must update it regularly. If you don't, it's useless. Okay, I'm just going to say it straight. It is absolutely useless. So you need to uh, update that. You want to, you know, check when you install free software. You want to make sure that you are checking um, the little uh, the icons over here to make sure there's a little lock on there, that you've got HTTPS, which is the more secure protocol. You want to have good password policies, stay informed in the media about, um, you know, different tips and uh, reports to keep yourself safe. Don't give out your personal info. Don't click on just any link. That comes up in an email. Don't open attachments if you don't know who it's from. Um, guys, it, you know, it's actually very basic to stay safe. But um, yeah, most people just don't. For them, it's like too much work. Okay. So access versus privacy. We know at our schools, we have password policies. Um, and we have this so that we can't work on somebody else's data and, and work and actually claim that it's ours. Um and then I think this is the last one, the paranoid ABC, where we, when it comes to things like, you know, online and that, we assume nothing, we believe no one, and we check everything. That is how we keep ourselves safe online. And I think that, yeah, that is basically it for the modules that we would have covered in term two. Great 12s, I will be doing a practical video, but I think for you, I'm going to focus more on, um, you know, old uh, theory and practical questions to go with this but if there's anything else you need just let me know in the comments and i'll see what i can do to create some content thanks so much and i'll see you in the next video